But what about the fossil record? Are there really missing links and what does that all mean anyway? It's funny because a lot of times when I ask people, what's your best evidence for evolution? They'll say, well, fossils. And they'll say, but what fossils and why do you think they support evolution? And you know, most people can't answer that simple question. Isn't that interesting? The fossil record doesn't really confirm evolution at all. It actually confirms biblical creation and a worldwide flood. God created certain kinds of organisms and he gave them the ability to, to some extent, to adapt to their environment. They can't adapt in an unlimited sense, but they can diversify a bit. That's built into different organisms. We call that variation within a kind. Sure, you can get lots of different breeds of dogs from just two, that's not a problem. And furthermore, the Bible teaches there was a worldwide flood, which killed lots of organisms, at least the, those that dwelled on land and buried them in sediment. That's why we find fossils all over the earth. Now, when we examine these fossils, we f do we find evidence of one kind changing into another? And the answer is certainly not. What we find are lots of examples of variation within a kind. Of course, some kinds have gone extinct, like the dinosaurs and so on, but we don't find one basic category of animal, say, a reptile transforming into another type of animal, like a bird, for example. Now, there are always a handful of disputed specimens, and you know the evolutionists will bring up, well, what about Archaeopteryx? And then you find out a few years later, well, that's actually 100% bird. There's, it's not a transitional form at all. The only place you'll find transitional forms between major kinds is in the textbooks that students use in their schools. But you won't find it in the actual, real world. It exists only in the minds of the evolutionists.